encouraged in the Lord. And so I, I, I just praise God for uh, revival and Brother Tom. And I, we're going to try to get him back. I tell you, he's a powerful preacher. He's a man of God. And we, Amen. We, I like to be around preachers. And so uh, we want to think about this tonight. Now, now Sunday is Brother Mike's last day. Uh, he'll be leaving out Monday, I guess, Mike. And uh, he'll be leaving out of here Monday. And so we already mentioned about uh, maybe t uh, getting some cards or we're going to take up an offering Sunday for it. And uh, we, I've decided tonight just let the nice offering. We don't usually uh, give that much and designate too much. Unless you're giving the missions tonight, we'll let the offering go to him, okay? And we're going to try to help him the best we can between now and Sunday and just tell him how much we love him and care for him. And amen. I do. He's, he's one people to the Lord. These young people in our daycare love Brother Mike. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't, I don't know what we're going to have to put up with the likes of Kenny after he looks at something. I don't know, what, I don't know what's left. I, I just, just don't know. Brother Kenny, we'll encourage you another day. This Thank is not going to The Lord help us all. We appreciate all these fellows. Uh, two, two of the finest young men that have worked together. Amen. They helped our church. They're the ones that are putting on this TV. I call it CNN, amen. But uh, they have put all this together and helped us. We're live on Sunday morning. Uh, we've got many responses on it. These guys have worked together, coordinated. I don't know how Aaron puts up with him, too. That's the problem. That's what I'm working on. But anyway, we just want to thank the Lord for them. So stick around tonight and enjoy, and let's get to it tonight. Ushers, you go ahead and come. Let's go ahead and take the offering tonight and uh, bless him. And you just give as you can. If you're not prepared, maybe you can bring it Sunday. That would be all right. And uh, just uh, just do something, and we'll all put it together. Our church is going to do something, and uh, we're going to help him. He's got to move. Uh, I know this. Uh, You've got, I'm going to let you tell all of it, all right? He's got to move. We've got to get all his junk out of my house and down to Tennessee. Amen? And so somehow we've got to move with, with something. I don't know if it's a U-Haul. They're working all that out now. Y'all got a trailer or a truck set up, or a big truck, somebody said. So they've got to do that. He's got to move that with the gas expense and, uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, that's what we're trying to do. And then when you get down there, they've got to put... They've got to put their first month's deposit down on their place. So hallelujah. So uh, welcome to the new world. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And welcome. I wish I could preach honey and bed and roses, but uh, just lock and load. That's all I can. <laughs> just hang on. Just, just hang on. Amen. It'll get better when you get a raptured body. That's all I can take. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray tonight. Amen. It'll get better. Amen. It ain't all, honey. Say amen right there. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. About two, three years, you find out what they're made of. Amen. I watched been working on me 30 years. Look at look how I turned out. No comment on that. Don't comment. I'm going to pray because I don't even get to spiritual right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's pray, let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord, we do thank you. That's wonderful. It's wonderful to see God blessing a young couple. We praise you for that. Pray you put your hand upon Brother Mike tonight. Encourage him in the Word of God. Uh, to encourage us. We need the Word of God tonight. And I thank you for this church. Lord, we just want to be a blessing and help us to do our part and what we can do. Lord, we give you praise. Uh, Lord, bless our fellowship time tonight as we as we close out, and we'll give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
going to go ahead and do our prayer time at this time like we normally do. Um, don't forget, is it Alice Bryant? Am I saying that right? Tomorrow, surgery tomorrow morning. And uh, that's Brenda Foley's sister. I believe that's right, isn't it? And uh, we want to pray for her and remember her tomorrow. And then also, uh, I've got a dear preacher friend, uh, Brother Bobby Lennon. Brother Bobby was the one we had scheduled last year to come to our camp meeting. And then he had a funeral service that he had to go in the tent to and couldn't come to our meeting. But uh, uh, Brother Bobby has been having a meeting down in here. It, it's every Easter Monday and Tuesday for I don't know how many. I've been going at least 20 years in a row myself, my family. And last night, his meet was coming up this coming Monday. Last night, he had a heart attack. And so we need to pray for Brother Bobby Leonard. Brother Bobby yeah. found out. He went to the local hospital. And then they, he lives in Monroe, which is next door to Charlotte. And, uh, and Monroe sent him to the main doctor at the main hospital in Charlotte. And they did stir surgery, put a stent in there. 100% uh, blockage on one of his arteries there. He lived on two. And so that's not good. And so... Uh, Bobby Leonard is his name. Brother Bobby Leonard is very well known in the Carolinas. He's well known everywhere. But he he is a preacher's preacher. He loves preachers. And uh, I can't tell you the impact he's had on my family and my kids and my myself. And uh, we, we just we just love him. And uh, uh, just they canceled the meeting and they just felt like it wasn't uh, you know due to the pressure on the meeting and different things. So. Pray for Bobby Leonard, the Leonard family, okay? Brother Frank Leonard as well. Come on, Brother Carter, and you can take it from there. And, and we've got several others. I know. Amen. Folks, good to see you tonight. Amen. Amen. If I saw Brother Archie Martin today, <clears throat> he told me, he said, Brother Carter, the Lord willing, I'm going to be in church on Sunday morning. Amen. So I reminded him of the church schedule. I said, now don't you... Show up here tonight on quarter to ten yeah. for uh, uh, Sunday school because we ain't gonna have none. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> we really encourage you to pray for the services this coming Sunday. Easter is always a special time, yeah. and in most cases, you can get people to come to church on Easter when you can't get them to come no other time. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, we encourage you to do that, and I uh, called Mrs. Joanne Gibson. I was going to go by there today, and but she did not. Well, no one answered the phone, and so I said to myself, "Well, I ain't driving all the way down there just for the sake of driving." I mean, I love to drive, folks. Ain't no doubt about that. But uh, not just for the sake of driving. But uh, Pastor David was talking a while ago about uh, Mike and, and, and his gas money. We were in Texas a couple of weeks ago. We were there in Comanche, and their gas was 3.34. So I told Rita, I said, "Well, the interstate's only about 50 miles up the road. Maybe we can save us a nickel." Well, I saved a nickel all right. I paid 3.49, <laughs> and I was getting down to where uh, I don't know how familiar you are with with the. Uh, West Texas area, but you get out in West Texas and you think you're going to be hungry, you better eat if you can. Yeah. And you think you're going to need some gas, you better buy some. Yeah. Because there's going to be a long way. Yeah. You say, well, it's the interstate. I know that. <laughs> Folks, I, I travel too many miles in West Texas. But anyway, it's good to be in church tonight. Yes, Ray has been about three and a half hours in the dentist's office uh, today, so I left her laying on the couch. <laughs> and so if you keep her in prayer, we'd be so grateful to you. And, uh, of course, it's uh, nice to mention Brother Leonard and, and also Brother Leonard. As I've told a lot of folks, you go to sleep and you wake up and you've had a heart attack, it'll change your lifestyle. I mean, a whole, whole lot it will. Went to a heart doctor on Monday, and he said, you're doing all right. Went to a regular doctor today, and he said, you're doing all right. So I thought about stopping by the funeral home and making my prearrangements. <laughs> These doctors tell you you're doing all right. Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical of the yeah. But uh, anyway, who do they have on this side? They are. Uh, Jeff.
Jack and Missy and their family. All right. Hey, anyone else? Okay. Somebody very special to me is planning to come to church with me on Sunday. Get the praise of the Lord. I really do like him. Hey, amen. Hey, anyone else? All right, Sister Julie. Sister churches of like faith here in Long Valley. Some of our churches are going through extremely difficult times. And, and uh, I was talking to Dr. Jones today about over here at Bonsack Baptist. And those folks need prayer. That folks say, well, that's a big church. Well, depending on your definition of big. But they need 
need prayer. Mm -hmm. I need anyone else. I need it. All right, what about you ladies over on this side? Anyone at all? All right, let's have our special prayer time, then we'll have our special music. So, Brother Ken, lead us in prayer. Would you please say that? opportunity to get up and <clears throat> again folks it's been mentioned to our services on Sunday I encourage you to pray and encourage others to come that God might bless wouldn't it be nice to have a service one day that the fire marshal stood at the door and said look you fellas got all inside the law of the life so nobody else can come in Amen. Just like old Moses one day told the folks, we ain't going to take no offering. Yeah. Amen. We got, we, we, we got a plan. <laughs> hey. I want to thank the Lord I'd be in my Amen. 
I thank God for what a mighty God we serve. I tell you, anybody that could carry a heavy load around and God comes in into your heart and just takes it all away. And I tell you, I was coming by the church here, going to run over, and I got some song I got on the tape, but I don't know what it is to sing. That song will come on, I got happy the first thing I know. I got an on that run 75 miles. Yeah. I said, whoa, here, whoa. I said, this is Brother David. Yeah. He me. I took my foot off of that game.
telling the group last night in the revival that uh, coming down the road. Now, how many of you know the Mark Trammell Quartet? Probably number number one. They called him. They called Lee, and uh, their bass singer resigned, and they wanted him to try out. There's only one problem. It's down there in Alabama. Amen. He said, I don't know anything or anybody in Alabama. Amen. So they want him to try out, but he's he's got a wife, and she about murdered him and said, no, amen. I don't know. He knows it. And he said, I don't know anybody. So, but it's, it, it, you know, when you go down one day, then God sends you something and pick you right back up. That's what I'm trying to say. So, amen. Pray for him. Pray for him. And pray for him. Let me give you this, and we're going to fellowship because our time's getting away. What time is church? Sunday morning. 10.30. All right? Make sure you get that. With no Sunday school, 10.30. If you'd like to go up here and get an old-fashioned breakfast at Colonial Baptist Church, we will meet here. The bus will be warmed up, and it will be leaving the property here at quarter till. Okay? And so if you'd like to go eat, everything that Colonial Baptist is having a... Uh, breakfast there, and they invited all of us to go, and I'll be preaching at 7.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning, so I don't know how one hour open or one hour should or something, but anyway, we're going to have a good time of eating and a little bit of about 30 minutes of preaching, and then we'll come on back here at 10.30 and start the morning service, okay? So be praying, you're welcome to come to that, and be here 10.30, no Sunday night service. And uh, we'll be looking forward to a great day this coming Sunday, Lord's Day. Amen. Stand, fellowship one another, shake hands with one another, and let's just have a good time uh, just getting to know one another. Shake hands with our visitors real quickly. Uh, Anna, she's a blessing. She has a heart for the Lord, and that encourages me. 
Now, I know they didn't come here to hear me preach tonight. They came for the pizza yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to try to be real quick so that we can get to that. Together. I'm teasing. I'm teasing with them. Um, but um, yes. I guess, if, if anything, to, uh, to tell you to describe my emotions tonight, it's just it's mixed. Um, I'm humbled. I'm very grateful for the many opportunities that have been given to me here uh, by, by Pastor, by Miss Christy, by uh, Brother Kenny to serve the Lord here. I'm thankful for what God's allowed me to do here. Um, I've learned a lot what to do in ministry. I've also learned what not to do in some aspects of ministry. But I've learned so much, and I'm so grateful for the time that the, the Lord's allowed me to spend here. Amen. I got to know a lot of you, and uh, some of you I might not have gotten to know as well as others. I wish I could have, um, but I, I'm grateful for you all. I'm grateful for New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, you all mean so much to me, and, and um, I was thinking about it today before church, uh, being able to go up um, to Michigan with, with Christy and Kaylee this past weekend. It was great to go back to my uh, my church family where I grew up. But I got to thinking about it, and I got to think of moving from here next week, and I got to thinking that this is another church family to me now. And um, I, I, I'm very thankful for my time here and for you all. You've been such an encouragement and blessing to me. And uh, I'm thankful for what the Lord's done in my heart. Um, but like I said, mixed emotions. It was funny. There was a, a, a young girl in the after school program who came up to me uh, today before chapel. And she gave me this little drawing. Um, and it says, I will miss you, Mike. And then she has here a little picture of, uh, she says it's her here, this little drawing. And she's got a sad face with her long hair. And then next to it, she's got a guy with a happy face. And I said, who's this? And she said, well, well, that's me. And I'm sad that you're leaving. But that's you. And, and you're happy because you're, you're moving so you can be with your fiancé. And I said, I said well, look, I, I, I'm sad too. I'm sad that I'm leaving. I said, I'm happy that I'm, I'm moving to Tennessee to be with my fiancé. But at the same time, I said, I'm sad that I'm, I'm leaving you all. I'm leaving everybody here. Yeah. And so she pulled this out of my hand, and she said, well, wait. She picked up a pencil, and she drew a bunch of lines coming from my eyes down to the floor. And then she said, I said, well, what is that? She said, well, that's your tears. You're crying because you're happy and you're sad at the same time. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? A, a picture, it really does speak a thousand words, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's how I feel. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about what the Lord's going to do in me and Kaylee's life, um, in this new phase of life. And I'm thrilled about it. I'm excited about it. Uh, but at the same time, I, it's sad leaving you Hope Baptist Church. And, and I'm going to be sad to, to, to leave here, but I know we'll be have a chance to uh, still uh, spend some time together tonight, and also we'll be visiting on several occasions, so uh, that won't be an issue. Turn in, if you would, to Matthew chapter number 18. I'll try not to be long tonight at all. Um, if not, y'all just stand up and start walking over the feet, okay? All right. Matthew chapter number 18. This is the message that the Lord has laid on my heart. And um, it's something that he's spoken to me about recently. As I, as I think about what I'm going to be uh, gearing towards, as I think about this next chapter of my life and what God's been working on my heart about, I know that there are so many challenges ahead. But I'm the type where I like to plan things out. I like to have a plan, a budget, all kinds of things. And that's just how my brain works. I like to put it all on paper. And I like to get this idea in my mind that if I can work this and this and this out, everything's going to go smoothly. Everything's going to be all right. And I have this mindset, but... The thing that the Lord's pressed on my heart these past few weeks is that even when we think we have everything figured out, yep. we don't. That's right. He does. Amen. And we have to remember that we need Him. Right. Amen. No matter how independent our mind gets and no matter how much we think that we can do things without right. Him, right. we need Him. And He wants us to come to a place where we need Him. Matthew chapter 18, and look, verse, look at uh, verse number 1. It says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The title of my message tonight is a simple question to ask yourself, to ask myself. Are you acting like a child? Are you acting like a child? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the day that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for New Hope Baptist Church. I thank you for Pastor McNeil. I thank you for Miss Christie, Brother Kenny, Miss Aaron. I, I 
thank you for Brother Carter, Miss Loretta. I thank you for all the people that you brought here, Lord, the, the leaders of this church and the people that make up the body of Christ, your church here, Lord. They've been such an encouragement to me. God, I just ask that you use this message tonight. You speak to hearts, Lord, as you've spoken to mine through it. Fill me with your spirit. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, as I've, as I've learned over time in the months that I've been here and had a wonderful opportunity to teach and, and, and preach to the kids in chapel time in our after school program, and, and even um, in some aspects in other areas, whether it was a junior church where I'd help out, and, and I used to help out on uh, last summer on Wednesday nights, and I know Brother Mike and then you truth trackers now, but I've learned so much about how kids are. You'd think with younger siblings you would, but I've learned so much more of how kids react to different things. And when we tend to think of little children, um, we, if you're like me, I tend to think about what they're incapable of doing. You know, kids have so much to learn. I tend to think about the negatives of things that kids still have uh, to gear towards, what they have to learn, how they have to grow. And I started thinking and writing down things about what kids still need to work on, the negatives, if you could call them negatives, of children. Because that's what we tend to think. They still need so much more to grow. And I wrote down some things, just thinking about children. Children have to rely on someone for their needs. Children are apt to believe something that is told by an older person. Children are constantly learning. Children don't know what's best for them. Children are weak. Children aren't confident and tend to get scared easily. Children can't handle as much food as adults, and we know that. Children cry easily. Children grow from asking questions and someone telling them and instructing them. They have to grow. Children are defenseless. We think about children. We think these are some of the thoughts we think when we think about children. You know, we think about the ways and areas of they have so much more to grow. They have so much more to learn. There's so much more ahead of them. But if that were the case, if, if that's all there was when you think about children, why did Jesus bring a child in front of his disciples that day? You think they were asking him, can you see them debating amongst themselves? Who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And can you see them going back and forth and thinking, well, I think I am. Well, Peter, it's not you. I mean, remember? When you took your eyes off Jesus and you went sinking in the sea, remember that? It's definitely not you, Peter. You know, and maybe he was going, well, you guys were scared in the boat. At least I'm going to let you go. I think I am the greatest. And maybe another disciple was saying this, well, what about this? Well, I think I'm the greatest. They were debating. The Bible says they were debating amongst themselves. Who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Well, who could it be? Well, I think it was a pride issue. It was a pride issue. When you think about it, who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And when they went to him and they asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who could Jesus have called up in front of the disciples? Well, he could have brought up the person who allowed him to stay in their home the night before and thought, that's the person who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. They were given to me because Jesus traveled. He had to stay places. People housed him from place to place, from town to town. He could have brought up, well, this person, they allowed me to stay in their home last night. That's who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He could have brought up the one who gave him food to eat that day and say, they provided a meal so I could eat and be filled. That's who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He could. He could have brought up someone who was poor or was seeking to be healed and said, this person is seeking to be healed. They are seeking for life and they know to find it in me. And he could have brought that person up and said, they are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Yep. By all means, he could have pointed out and stood up among them and said, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is me. And he could have rightfully said that. He is the greatest. He was the most humble man. He is the most amazing, amazing person to ever, ever live on this earth because he was the only sinless person Amen. to ever live on this earth. He could have brought anyone up of those people, but he didn't. He brought up a little child to his disciples. Who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Lord? He sees, sees the little child. What's your name? What's your name? Come on up. Come on up. And can you picture this little kid standing up there? I don't know what to do. Probably maybe embarrassed as they're standing in front of all these adults. And you know what he says? He starts off. There's two parts to his answer. There's two parts to his answer. And the first part was, you can't even, 
You can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. You can't even enter. They're saying, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? But he doesn't even get to that yet. He says, no, no, no. We're not getting into who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let's get this point straight out. You can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse number three. Except you be converted and become as little children. I submit to you all tonight that God's desire is not for us to be childish, but to be childlike. There's a reason why when you look at Israel, when God in Scripture is referring to Israel, if you total up all the number of times that he would refer to them as the people of Israel in the Bible, only 20 times. Do you want to know how many times he refers to them as the children of Israel? 647 times. Why did he refer to them as the children of Israel? There was a point he was trying to make. The children, we as children of God, we need our Father. Amen. And Jesus was saying, you can't even enter. Forget who's the greatest. You can't even enter into the kingdom of God except you be converted and become as little children. When you think of a little kid, you know what you think? They've got that faith that they're going to believe anything you say and they are going to take your word. If you tell some younger kid that they can fly if they get high enough, chances are some of them, they might try it. I can remember one time when there was a a young kid, this was a couple months ago, and it was a little girl, I can't remember which one it was, but I remember her coming up to me and she had kind of scraped her elbow outside on the playground. And I can remember her coming up to me and saying, Mr. Micah, I scraped my elbow, and, I, and it wasn't that bad. To her, it was, it was the worst thing in the world. But it wasn't that bad, but she said, I scraped my elbow a little bit. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on. Have you ever heard of the healing shake? Sure. Is it a shake? Is it a chocolate shake? No, <laughs> well, the healing shake. You never heard of that? I'm making this up as I go along to her. She has no idea. I said, the healing shake. What? I said, quick. Do something really quick. She goes, Okay. I think it was her left arm. I said, raise your left arm up with the, with the cut on it. She raised it up. I said, start waving them back and forth. And she's waving them back and forth. I said, okay, now, now. Are you still doing it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go faster, go faster. I said, right, grab your other hand and start waving it. So she's doing this back and forth. Okay, is this fast enough? No, you gotta go faster. I said, okay, hop on one foot. She starts hopping on one foot. I'm not gonna do the hop on one foot. But she starts hopping on one foot. I said, okay, switch feet. She's going back and forth. She's doing all these crazy things. I said, okay, now hop over here, hop over here. All right, now go back to this one hand. She's doing that. I said, okay, now put it down. She put it down. She said, how did I bet she's going? I said, I just made all this up. <laughs> you see, I can't believe all this time he's been making things up to these kids. But you know what? She got done. I said, now wait a minute. I said, does it feel better now? And she goes, yeah, he died. And she goes up running back in the playground. She didn't do anything. Mm. I didn't even stick a band in on it. Nothing happened. I said, but I convinced her that the healing shake, all right? Now, we're not going to have a healing shake service here, all right? But the point is, kids will believe anything you tell them. They have that childlike faith that they are going to take you at your word. If you tell them something, they're going to listen to it. Yeah. Yes, that's Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, they don't just say, I believe it. They actually do it. Yeah. And Jesus said, except you be converted and become as little children, you can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now wait, what was he referring to? You see, when we have childlike faith, we take that as word. And when God gives us a scripture in his word that says, you want to be saved? Believe mm-hmm. on the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. and thou shalt be saved. And when we, with that childlike faith, take him at his word and go, I believe it. I believe it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe on him. I'm going to trust in Jesus Christ to take me into heaven. It's only by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, if we weren't acting like kids, you know what we would do? We would stop questioning. I don't know. That little girl that day, when I told her that, she didn't go, "Mm, I don't believe that's true. She started doing it right away. You know, the childlike faith is hearing what God says in his word and believing it. And when someone has that childlike faith and believes, believes the word of God, believes that the only way for salvation is through Jesus Christ 
It's not by me trying to do good things. It's not by me trying to live a good life. It's not trying for me to, to give to the poor or come to church every single week. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's already paid the way. When we believe on Him, it's that childlike faith, believing on Him. Amen. Acting on that, trusting in Jesus Christ. And He said, accept, be converted, become as little children. You shall not enter into the kingdom of God. That's the first part of right. first part of his answer. About becoming like a little child. I asked you, are you acting like a child? Let's look at the second part. Second part of Jesus' answer. Now he gets to the part where he's actually answering them. And he says, Whosoever, verse number four, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. First, you've got to become like a little child. You've got to take, take God at his word and believe in him and trust in him. Just like a little child. You don't question it. You don't doubt it. You just take God at his word, have faith and trust in what he says, and you act on it. You trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. But you want to talk about who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's the one who humbles themselves like a little child. Amen. The one who humbles themselves. You know? A child may look to their mom and dad to, to know what to do in certain situations. You think of Christmas morning, and maybe they get some kind of a... I, I can think of times, I remember one of those connects. They were kind of like Legos back when I was a kid. And I would get this big connect project for, for Christmas. I don't call it a project, but looking back on it, it was a project. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They have those connects. They're kind of like Legos. And you put them all together, and you can make trucks, and you can make uh, Ferris wheels. You can make buildings. You can make all kinds of things out of those connects, you know, those, those little pieces all together. But I can remember sometimes, I didn't know what the directions meant. I didn't know how to put the thing together. You know, I get so irritated. I got so excited about this gift, and now I have no idea what to do. You know what I do? I go run to dad. Go run to mom and say, I don't know what to do. you got to help me. I can't do this on my own. I can't. Yep. And as a child, that's what they do. They'll run to adults because they know, I can't do this on my own. I've got to have your help. I know you've got the answer. You can help me with this. I can't do it myself. Yeah. You know what they're doing? They're humbling themselves, realizing, I can't do this. Hey, right. I need you. That's what a child does. You know, somewhere along the line, we develop this independent spirit. This independent attitude of, I can handle this. I can, if I can just figure this out and this out and this out and this out, I can handle all this. I can handle this life problem. If this comes in my way, I've got this budget. I've got this thing figured out. I've got this figured out. I've got all this figured out. I'm going to be all right. And our Heavenly Father says, oh. you know, sometimes he puts trials in our life. Not always. Sometimes he does. So we can see. Our eyes can be open and we can see. We need to run to him. And we need him. Amen. And I'm afraid I, I have gotten to that point in my, in my life at times. Why well, get to thinking that I've, I've got this all figured out, I've got a plan, I've got it on paper, I've got all these things figured out. And I forget to humble myself and realize I cannot go through life. Yes. I cannot go into my marriage. I cannot go into the next phase of life. I cannot raise a family. I cannot go back to college. I cannot do anything. On my own. I've got to humble myself and go to my father and tell him that I need him. Amen. Because he has the answers. He has every answer I could ever ask. And so I ask you, are you acting like a child? Are you acting like a child in your life? Am I acting like a child in my life? If I were to look at my life from day to day, you know, the story is told of a, a kindergarten teacher. And she was there at recess time at her desk. And a little boy had taken the end of a roll of paper towels, you know, that tube, and he put it over his eye. And he was looking everywhere around the room, and he was going to his teacher, and he going, I see you over there. I see you over there, teacher. And everywhere as she goes to this part of her desk, or she goes to this part of the classroom, I see you over there, teacher. I see you. And everywhere she goes. Everywhere she goes, he has his eye on her. I see you. I see you over there. And starts realizing what he's doing. And she turned to him, joking with the back. He says, oh, do you, do you see me over here? She's nodding. Says, yeah, I see you over there. And all of a sudden, he points that thing down. He says, wait a minute. I see your heart. I see your heart. And she's puzzled by this. She's 
Did you see my heart? That's inside of me. How do you, how do you see my heart? And he pointed to it. She had a little heart necklace right there. I see your heart. May I tell you, that's our Father. Mm-hmm. Our Heavenly Father. Everywhere we go, every single day of our lives, He's going, I see you. I see you over there. I see that child we're going through today. No, I see you. I see you. I know you don't think I can see, but I see you. I see you over here. I see you over here. I see you everywhere you go. I was blessed enough to have a father in my home who I could come to when I needed help. But there are some people who they never have that. And they don't have that. And some people may have had a father in their home, but they never felt that they could go to him with their problems, with their troubles, with their worries. And an earthly father can help us out in many ways, but there's something that he can't see. That's our heart. But our Heavenly Father can look and see us everywhere we go, and most importantly, he can see into our heart. Yep. Amen. And even if no one else around you can see the fears and the worries and the troubles that are going on in your heart, we have a Heavenly Father who sees every single bit of it. There are some things we might not mention here at church that we're going through. There are some things we don't dare to mention to other people because we think, if I told them that this was a worry of mine or that I thought this way about myself or this, then I I don't want people to know about that fear I have or that worry I have. Can I tell you? I have worries tonight. I have fears in my mind. You know what? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But I'm glad to know that even if we have fears and worries in our mind, there's a Heavenly Father who sees our heart and knows. And I'm glad He doesn't expect me to go through it alone. Amen. He doesn't expect me to go on to the next stage of my life alone. He doesn't expect me to go through life by myself. I'm glad I've got a Heavenly Father who wants me to act like a child and to run to Him and to crawl up into His lap because He's going to hug me and hold me and He's there. It's just, Scripture says, casting all your care upon Him for He careth for you. We've got a Heavenly Father who cares for us! Amen. And my question again tonight, are you acting like a child? Are you acting like a child? Let's go to the Lord and pray. Let's pray tonight. They're going to come and get a song. We'll get the piano up here in just a minute. I got converted as a little boy. Six years of age. My daddy's a preacher. I lived in a preacher's home. Preacher's kids need to be saved just like anybody else does. Amen. And I'm glad I got converted. I'm saved tonight. That means this. I know tonight I'm on the way to heaven. I know that by what the scripture says. I know that by what Jesus says. I know that by what I know inside my heart. I question to you tonight, can you tell me tonight, can you tell the Lord he knows, have you been converted? Young people, are you saved tonight? Do you want to go to heaven? Everybody does. You've got to be converted. You've got to be saved. Amen. You say, well, what is that, preacher? That means you've got to put your faith in Christ, just like he said, as a little child. It's not hard. We used to say, getting saved is as easy as ABC. The little kids learned ABCs. They say, what is that, preacher? Number one, admit. That's A. Admit you're a sinner. B, what's that? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. A, admit. B, believe. C, confess. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. 
Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. We're praying. Christians pray. We say, Preacher, I know that I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven because I admit it today. I was a sinner before God one day. B, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did, paying for my sins, shedding his blood on the old rugged cross. And see, there was a time that I remember in my life. I can take you to the place. I can prove it by the Bible that I confessed with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I had been converted because I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know I'm saved. If you could say that as a testimony of the Lord and I raise your hand to him tonight. Just raise it to him. What a blessing. What a blessing. God bless you. And maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Dave, I'm not sure. That's all right. There was a time when God spoke to me as a little child. And it doesn't matter whether you're 50 or 80 or if you become like a little child, like he said, you can be converted tonight. Jesus is still in the same business tonight. Maybe you need to come and trust Christ. Admit your sin, Dave. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess it's as easy as ABC. Maybe you need to do that tonight. Maybe some of us here tonight have gotten a little high. We've forgotten how to be great. Jesus said the greatest among them should be a servant. Children grow up to be adults. Amen. You want to be great, you've got to be a servant. Well, let's ask God to help us to stay humble. Be humble. If you exalt yourself, Jesus said, you shall be brought down low. You shall be abased. But if you'll be humble, he said, he'll exalt you. James said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Get in the right position, and God will pick you up. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, take this invitation tonight. What I pray that you'll say, there's somebody here maybe this deep in Christ. This night will be their night tonight just to come as a child and say, Lord, I need to be saved. What a wonderful joy it is to be saved. Lord, that young man down at the revival meeting last night, weeping in tears, confessed Christ and asked Christ to come in their heart. And Lord, he prayed that prayer, forgive me as a sinner. Thank you, Lord, for saving Thomas last night at the revival meeting. But Lord, you're here tonight. Lord, it's just a simple message, a gospel message. We need to be converted if we're going to go to heaven. Lord, if there's one that needs to be saved tonight, give them courage. Give them strength. Lord, help them to walk down this aisle and take a Bible. We'll show them how to be saved. We'd love to do that. Lord, bless tonight. Maybe Christians need to come. Maybe we've gotten too high. We need to humble ourselves. Well, that's the only way we're going to be exalted. We're your servants, Lord. Thank you for the message tonight. Take this invitation in Jesus' name. We'll sing the song. Listen, if you're here, you say, Brother Davis, please, and I, I know that. We're fixing to go eat pizza, cookies, and Coca Cola. If you're here tonight, if you're not sure in your heart, eternity is forever. The greatest day in your life is that word converted. Why don't you ask God to save you tonight? You come and pray. Maybe you need to come and join these. I need to believe Christ. I need to confess Christ. I need to be saved. You come right now. We'll be glad. I'll pray with you. Show you how you can be saved. You come on right now while we sing. Sing it now. You obey the Lord.